morning, Marina United Methodist Church. I'm Kathy Culper, also known as KK, and I am the head of our Ad Council here at the church. We have found us this morning on the World Wide Web, and we look forward to worshiping with all of you in this, which is our new normal, as we shelter in place and in prayer. Kathy, we can't we can't hear you. There's a problem with the um, microphone or something. Sorry. Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Okay. I will start again. Good morning, United Methodist Church. I'm Kathy Culper, your ad council chair here at the church. And in prayer. I have a few announcements this morning to share with you. Please make sure that you have something to eat or to drink for communion this morning, as that will be part of our worship service. And if you have prayer requests, I ask that you put it in the chat room portion at the bottom. Also, please continue to save your recycles and make sure that they have California redemption on them while you are putting them and sorting them for me to pick up throughout the month. I think that is it. Okay, uh, KK was breaking up still there a little bit. Uh, one of the announcements I got was that the church recycles. So if you uh, would like to collect for the church. We send out in the currents the description of what we can take and what we can take. So take a look at the currents if uh, if you're wanting to recycle for the church. And when in doubt, look for the CRV uh, label on on the uh, uh, recyclable. Other announcements I have is that we have an up back to Sunday school class coming up starting August 30th. Uh, at 2 p.m. So give us enough time to after church have some lunch and then at 2 p.m. on Zoom we'll have a back to Sunday school class and our topic is the method in Methodism. So we'll be exploring for six weeks what Methodism is. So if you'd like to join uh, uh, shoot me an email. Uh, I'll be sending out the Zoom information as we get a little closer to the August 30th start date uh, but I'm hoping we have a good turnout for our discussion on Methodism. The other thing is that I am looking for someone to help us uh, lead us in our stewardship campaign. Uh, if you feel that uh, this is something you'd be interested in, please email me and I'd be happy to talk to you. This is a role uh, that someone would fill to help us uh, find ways to strengthen and expand the ministries of our church, uh, especially during this time. So we'll now turn to our call to worship which is found in our worship guide uh, that was emailed out. If you've got an hour, now's the time to share it. We bless, we will bless the Lord at all times. This is just the day. God's praise shall be continually in our mouths. Amen. Now join us for our opening hymn, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. If you have a hymnal, it's uh, page number 57, and we will be doing verses 1 through 3 and verse 7. Uh, otherwise, the words are printed in the worship guide.
Okay, hopefully this is better. Today's first scripture reading is from Romans 10, chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. Moses writes this about righteousness, that it is by law. A person who does these things will live by them. But so the KK, righteousness... KK, you're breaking up, so I'll, I'll read if, if it'd be easier. That's fine. Sorry. Okay. No worries. No worries. So our first reading is from Romans 10, 5 through 15. Moses describes in this way the righteousness that is by the law. The man who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend to heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our next hymn is 474 precious lord take my hand Okay, so I think I'll lead the prayers of the people if I can find that on here. Let's see. Okay. So pray, continue prayers for our military soldiers and prayers for our country for, uh, for love to prevail above all else. Prayers for Alistair's mother who has some challenges um, at this time. And also we pray for Ruth Bader Ginsburg's health. Lord, hear our prayer. Any other prayers can be sent in the chat. Otherwise, we can transition to the pastoral prayer. Oh. 
Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, new each day is your love. And we give thanks for the gift of technology, for the opportunity to be present with one another, even virtually. God, we, we remember the prayer requests written in the chat, those uh, in, that we whisper in the night, and those prayers that are too grand for words. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are assisting those who are sick. We pray for our military. And in particular, we will remember this week, the anniversary of the bombing in Japan. And we pray that there would be no more war. God, we ask that you would be with our, our young neighbors at Olson as they transition into this new learning experience. We pray for their teachers, for their principal. We ask that you would use our congregation in any way to help our students succeed. This Sunday, we remember our sister church at uh, Pacific Grove and their pastor, Gail Baston. And we ask that we would find ways to work together, especially in this time of pandemic, to share your love as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our mother and father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our second scripture is Matthew 14, starting with verse 22. <clears throat> Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because of the wind against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come unto the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he had saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when he had climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. My gracious master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread throughout the world abroad, the honors of thy name. Amen. <clears throat> One thing that I love so far about being in Marina is being so close to the beach. Since moving here, I've been going about twice a week to the beach on my days off and walking along the shore here at the Marina State Beach. I find it exciting to do these walks on the beach. It's not like walking at the park or walking in the neighborhood. There's some excitement about going to the beach and it's kind of a workout. As you all know, you the sand isn't solid ground. So one step, you can sink pretty deep into the earth. And this causes some resistance for that next step 
in the sand. It could be hard to maintain some balance. And even if you add the, the, the crashing waves onto the shore that, that are pushing you aside, the not solid sand, the not, not solid crashing winds, it can really throw off your balance. One wrong step in the sand or one strong wave can even cause a quick moment of fear. A moment where you wish you'd have someone's arm to grab onto. I haven't fallen yet, knock on wood, but there have been those brief moments of imbalance, those moments of fear that I was gonna fall over. This sense of imbalance, of fear, makes me think of our gospel reading this morning. After the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus tells his disciples to go by boat on the other side of the sea while he sends out the multitude that were gathered there. He then sent, spent some isolation time, time in prayer. And now the disciples were off at sea, and then a storm had begun. The boat was battered by the winds and the waves. And then in the early hours of the morning, Jesus came to them walking on water. Not only were the disciples afraid for their lives because of the, of the waves and wind, but now they saw someone who kind of looked like Jesus walking on water. They assumed it to be a ghost. And then Jesus spoke to them to take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter then asked Jesus to call him out into the water, and Jesus tells him to come. And there goes Peter, placing his feet into the water, taking steps towards Jesus. But with the strong wind and the crashing waves, Peter had that moment of imbalance, that moment of fear, and his feet began to sink. Lord, save me, he cried. Jesus reaches for him and helps him back into the boat. Throughout the ages, Peter has been played out to be the fool of the disciples. He's always the first one to make that step, to, to answer Jesus, to do exactly what he said he wasn't going to do. But how often is Peter's response our response? There are times in life, although we are in the midst of a storm, we feel called to place our feet into the water, to take a stand, to take a risk, to follow Jesus. But then we begin to doubt ourselves, we begin to doubt the calling of God, and we have that moment of imbalance, those moments of fear that cause us to sink, that cause us to call out, Lord, save us. The Apostle Paul in our Romans passage today reminds us of the good news. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The good news in the gospel account with Peter is that he called out and Jesus reached out. Now in the epistle, Paul is explaining that salvation in Christ is available to all people. In Christ, there is no more Greek or Jew, nor female or male. There are no human constructs that can keep people away from salvation in Christ. For everyone, the apostle writes, who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And yes, that means everyone. People who don't look like you or speak like you or live like you or love like you. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord. And then the apostle asks, but how are they going to call on one whom they have not believed in? And how are they going to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they going to hear without someone proclaim him unless they are sent? In other words, my friends, the apostle is saying that there are many people in this world without any hope and that there is no one to bring them the message of hope that we understand in Jesus. My friends, there are many people living today without hope. They are in the midst of strong winds and crashing waves, sinking in the imbalance of this world, sinking in the fearful reality around us. 
pandemic, intolerance, hate, political division, injustice. These are the strong winds and waves all around. And I don't need to tell you that. You already know. And yet, Paul quotes from the book of Isaiah, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is a charge. This is a call. This is the answer to Paul's own questions. We are the ones <clears throat> to bring the good news, to bring that message of hope. We are to be fools like Peter and step into the storm to answer Jesus' call to come and place our feet in the waters. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Many people are calling out right now, Lord, save us. Many are sinking because of this life-altering pandemic. They're sinking because of lack of income or food or housing. They're sinking because of hate and rejection. And the list goes on and on. Many people, my friends, are sinking, even some amongst us. And Paul is inviting us to go, bearing this good news, resisting the imbalance of the world, the fear all around us, and offer hope and allowing Jesus to reveal himself in us, in our actions. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. After walking alongside the shore, my feet aren't very beautiful. Usually there's multiple layers of sand that I have to dust off. But now looking at these two passages, I look back on my life at those times of imbalance and fear, and I reflect on the people that Jesus sent when I called on him. How beautiful their feet were. And I think it's a true joy to think about that someone might be thinking of you and the beautiful feet that you might have for the good news that you offered them. It's such a good feeling, my friends, to know that in this time of imbalance and fear, that Jesus can use our feet to bring good news. Hallelujah. Amen. And now please join me in our pre-communion hymn, number 621, Be Present at Our Table, Lord. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to be in peace with one another. Therefore, in the silence of our hearts, let us confess those times where we have fallen short, those moments we have been complicit in the oppression of others, and when we have failed to love God and neighbor. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we might perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Believe the good news of the gospel, that when we call out to the Lord, 
he forgives. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with all creation and all the saints of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made for us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, and in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And, and so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and gathered and scattered and on these gifts of grape and grain. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This table, my friend, your table, doesn't belong to us. In this meal, this is Christ's table. And no one can stop you from sharing in this meal. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is the bread of life broken for you, and this is the cup of promise poured for you. Let us share this meal together. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world by the power of the Holy Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
at this moment, we will be uh, have an opportunity to reflect on our giving uh, to, to God and to the church. Uh, our stewardship moment for now is uh, just a time to reflect on the ways in which we give back to the Lord, all the gifts that God has given us. Uh, please consider, uh, if you're able, to, to send a check to the church at 281 Beach Road here in Marina so that we can continue and expand the ministry and witness of our church, especially in this difficult time. Thank you. And I think Giselle will, will play for something for us. Let's pray. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. God, our cup runneth over with blessing. Use our gifts, our talents, our offering for your witness. In gratitude, we return of all of ourselves. Use us, use this church for your honor and glory and for love of neighbor. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn is in Christ there is no east or west. And that is, if you have a hymnal, it is 548 in the hymnal. And if not, it's in the worship guide. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. My friends, we are in a world with mighty winds and crashing waves. May our feet, both as individuals and as the Marina United Methodist Church, may our feet bring the good news that those who call on the name of our Lord shall be saved, that those who call we will respond. We will allow Jesus to use us in response to their call. And may we go with love and peace and joy. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you uh, for KK for being our liturgist for a minute, even though we had some technical difficulties. Thank you, Mike, for moderating our Zoom and for Giselle for the, uh, your gifts of music. Thank you all for joining us. And I think we'll end the recording here and we have a little bit of time for chit chatting.